it's a double weapon category, and we're going to try to unlock the combat in double weapon Filipino martial arts. This particular theme, holding a stick, holding a knife. Now, sinawali is a Filipino term for to weave, and it is something usually explained along with double weapons and the patterns and exercises that they do. Espari Adaga defined, well, this is really a sword or a machete, bolo kind of knife study. Uh, with many origins, many European origins, uh, the phrase itself is Spanish because of trade and travel to the Philippines through the centuries. In this practice, the sword, sometimes I've heard, even in the Philippines, it referred to as a spear, but uh, the sword officially, espada, officially translates to the word sword. And, but for most training everywhere in practicality, it is replaced by the stick. And you see so many people doing stick and knife, and they, and they call that espada adaga. But it originally is a sword. And I'm, you know, it's interesting to see in the last, I don't know, four or five years, people picking up a, a long sword and short sword and working with its true origins. But that's not what we're going to do today. We're going to stick with the stick and the knife. So why study double weapons at all or something like Espadia Daga? Well, traditionally and common sense wise, you know, it's great for exercise. It can develop sort of a functional strength. It's terrific for coordination. And it builds a certain attitude because you can hit things, hit your friend as hard as possible, as um, the Princess family would often say, the fire of the fight. And it, and it, it helps you hang in to the fight, uh, hang in there, so it develops a certain level of courage. Not to mention the fact that it is popular amongst Filipino folks, Filipino practitioners. It is popular, fun, and it is challenging to a lot of people. It becomes interesting to people to do. Espadiadaga may be limited uh, t in terms of modern world fighting applications because, you know, it's stick and knife or sword and knife, as we'll explain shortly. But, um, you know, for example, I've taught government agencies uh, that are not allowed to carry firearms in other countries, and they would often have a knife and a big flashlight. And they love these methods to give them something to do to fight with if they needed to. And one thing that I'm going to stick with, I don't want to do anything too complicated or unreal. And I've seen in progressions of Espadia Daga, these people get immensely tied up with their arms into a little pool cue thing. I just don't think that's going to happen in real life. It's pretty much a bash versus bash experience. So we're going to uh, keep it pretty simple, keep it pretty combative, and, and stay away from uh, the propensity to get too deeply complicated. As we progress through this, and I mention the fact that espadia daga usually means some sort of sword or bolo or machete uh, versus the stick, the stick handles differently than this. You know, almost all of the machetes are single edge, unless you find a certain bolo in the Philippines that are not. But you're just going to see the, the, uh, uh, the style of attack, the angles of attack, are often conducive to just one angle of a weapon. Whereas a stick is just a big round stick and it hits on various multiple angles rather than just pretty much one. So when you're doing this body daga with stick and knife, the stick has a, uh, uh, impact wise, has uh, much more possibilities and potential. For example, um, if you want to strike up, with a stick, you just strike up. But a lot of times with a single edge weapon, to strike up, they have to turn and bring the weapon up this way. And so that a lot of times just translates to the stick. If you want a six o'clock strike, you'll see people try to turn the stick this way, when in actuality, you can just bring it straight up. That's just one example of the differences between this and this. So people will often ask, why are there so many variables in double weapons or espadia daga? And really, one of the factors is you have two hands, and two hands are involved, and you have two arms, and you have two weapons involved, and the weapons can be different. Uh, they can be held differently. The stick can be held in the center, the knife is a sick, can be held in a saber or reverse grip. And then, of course, another major factor in the variables is the musical beat variations of the training patterns that they have. And so, uh, based on those few simple variables, it can be quite an extensive study. Uh, for our study today, we will be doing the, using the combat clock. 
uh, tw basic training, 12, 3, 6, and 9. Advanced training, all the numbers of the clock to save time because we only have about 52 minute potential for downloads. We're just going to do the basic training and not the advanced and keep it moving pretty quickly. As a rule of thumb, and I learned in the Philippines is the, the longest weapon goes into your best hand. Since 9 out of 10 people are right-handed, they'll usually have the stick or the sword or whatever into their longest hand. Now, sometimes just to comply with the crowd, you will see that lefties will just put their stick or sword in their right hand too to interact. But in many ways, if they switch to what they're supposed to do, they can have a tremendous advantage because uh, we writers, righties are not used to working out with lefties and it can create a different thing. But fundamentally speaking, the rule of thumb is longest weapon in your best hand. And we don't have time to cover this, but uh, the, let's put it this way. You're looking at an Espadiadaga video. And generally speaking, uh, you must have an interest in Filipino martial arts to look at this esoteric study. So I'm going to make the giant leap, and maybe it's not so giant, that you kind of know a little bit about this already. And you know about the importance of body elasticity in dodging attacks with hip twists and shoulder turns and hollowing out and so forth. And I'm going to assume that you must know some footwork already just to be interested in watching this. And we use the clock as patterns on the floor to get the heck out of the way and move around. Because, you know, in general, athleticism is essential and an essential part of this training. So real quick, you have the most common grip and the center grip uh, and the uh, almost walking cane grip that you'll see worldwide various Espadiadaga people will tra transition to. And with the knife, you have a, a saber or reverse grip. And so just for some starting positions, I like to call it the 12 o'clock. You can start open at 12 o'clock open, which is high. Here's a three, my 3 o'clock starting position, and that's right side open, left side closed. Here's the 6 o'clock version where both weapons are down, uh, both arms are open. And then here's the 9 o'clock version, the left side is open, the right side is closed over. You will find that many, many of the exercises begin from one of these four basic clock positions. So since I assume that you guys know a bunch of these basics, because this is an entire study by itself, this is an entire study by itself, you put the two of them together, you almost have an entire study of these two things together. But we are not going to... Uh, uh, Deep, jump deep in no, this alone and this alone. But in, or, in order to be the Espada Naga person, you have to be able to fight uh, and know some of these things. Just going to review them real quick. You, off the combat clock, you have that single slash. There's 12, there's 3, there's 6, and 9. And then you have the double slash or triple slash or whatever. That's, you know, 12 to 6 and back, 3 to 9 and back, etc. Following that same line, 2 or more multiple times. Then, you know, you have the slashing. If it's not on the same line, it becomes an X, or some may call a figure eight. And you know how we break that down? You have a two o'clock and a 10 o'clock, and a 10 o'clock and a two o'clock, or a four o'clock and a seven, or a seven and a four, working off the angles of the clock. And then you have uh, the classic hit and retract at 12. Hit and retract, hit and retract and all the numbers of the clock. Then, of course, you have a big circle with your stick. There's a 12 o'clock big circle. Here's a 3 o'clock big circle, and so on. And then you have the smaller circles, that there's 12, there's one at 3, there's 6, and there's 9. Uh, you may have the uh, tip end here, the fan strike, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Anything on the right side, 3, to anything on the left side, 9 o'clock. <clears throat> you've got beyond the shaft impact you have the tip you have a hook at 12 a hook at 3 a hook at 6 and a hook at 9 you have a thrust at 12 at 3 at 6 and at 9 o'clock and you have a pummel strike you have a hooking pummel from all these clock angles and a thrusting pummel at all these clock angles remember too that with a knife you have just fundamentally slashing and stabbing the saber grip is going to be a thrust 
or a hook on these angles. The reverse grip, same thing. The stab is either going to be a hook or a thrust. And the slashes are just following almost the stick slashes. Entire study here, entire study here that builds together this particular study of his body daga. And you must consider these strikes uh, with double weapons is they're going to be separate like on beats one, two, three, four, five, however many. So they engage separately or they engage simultaneously or you might say together, but together means two things. They can be distanced together or they can be apart and together. Like that classic side shot could be this way and it's more effective if it starts out small and comes out apart. Harder to deal with. So you can have that split on delivery. And also, don't forget, you can kick while you're doing these things too. So you have different... To get started, to interact with each other, we're just going to do these fundamental blockings. And remember that we have a block at 12 o'clock, which could be this way with the stick, or it could be this way. You have a block at 3 o'clock, which could be this way, or could be this way. You have a 6 o'clock block that could be this way, or could be this way. You have a 9 o'clock block that could be this way, or could be this way. The block that you select should be the most efficient move from where you were just an instant before you needed that block, which will predicate the point up, point down, point directions, you know. That's an unsupported block. With a knife, you have a block at 12 o'clock, that way or this way, 3 o'clock this way or this way, 6 o'clock this way or that way, and 9 o'clock this way or that way. Anything lower than that, sometimes we refer to as sweeping under the clock, but you have to be careful when you bend over and commit to this low shot because a lot of times they take advantage of you on the high line. But that could be considered a 6 o'clock kind of block also. Uh, those are unsupported blocks for close-up battle that are not super powerful. Supported, we'll run those through. If the stick blocks at 12, the knife supports high, medium, or low. If it's a reverse grip, it's high, medium, or low. 3 o'clock, support high, medium, or low. 6 o'clock, high, medium, or low support. And 9 o'clock, high, medium, or low. If you think you need it, it could be there. Then it's a little tricky, but you have a knife that might need support. 12 o'clock and three o'clock, and six o'clock, and then nine o'clock. For double blocks, you have these, these uh, parallel block where you, you might block like this, you know, both tips this way, 12 o'clock this way, six o'clock this way, or this way, nine o'clock this way. Maybe something configured, customized for a problem, but those are simultaneous blocking. And then you have uh, the uh, different tip directions. You might say the beginnings of an X here, but you have a 12 o'clock block that might look like this. A 3 o'clock block that may have this up and this down, or vice versa. A, a, a 6 o'clock block like this, and a 9 o'clock block that where the, the tips are in opposite directions. Remy Price has showed this to me, well, I guess in the late 1980s, and it was a... Uh, Crossava series, or you know, the X and the X blockings. And two fundamental ways to do it to, to cover all the possibilities. And it is almost like a horseshoe over the top of you the, an event here, 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 you know, and so on. And so you'll see if I start open over here, I close the X, open the X, close the X, open the X, and close the X. Now, to get a completely different version of that, you start close. So remember, we started over here open. This time we start close. We open here, close here, open here, close here, and open there. I just worry when we do these X's, do we just open them up without any lag time? We really need some lag time here or lag time here to get that weapon off of you because if we just open it, as you can see, this will come down and get me. So when we open these X's, there really needs to be a knife side or a stick side push away that completes the success of the block. Nice. We'll begin 
the uh, give and take studies now. And for starters, as we'll relate to all of these, it's a three-pronged thing. It's a stick attack, it's a knife attack, it's a stick and knife attack simultaneously. So our, our training partner the, that is attacking will strike at 12 o'clock with a stick. It could be any of the aforementioned ones I mentioned. You know, but a 12 o'clock attack, a 3 o'clock attack, a 6 o'clock attack, and a 9 o'clock attack with the stick, then a 12 o'clock knife, 3 o'clock knife, 6 o'clock knife, 9 o'clock knife, and the third part is both of them coming in, dealing with these four corners. What I'd like to see you do now, this guy's attacking you, stick, uh, you know, on all the four, and this knife on all four, and the stick and knife on all four. He is only allowed to block with the stick against all of these attacks. This, here's a skill uh, uh, isolation example of him blocking only with the stick against a variety of attacks. There's a 12 stick, a 3 stick, a 6 stick, and a 9 stick. Here's a, a 12 knife, 3 knife, 6 knife, and a 9 o'clock knife. And then we'll come in a little bit. Here's a double he has to use and isolate the skill part of using the stick against the attacks. In this next example, we're uh, uh, going to attack in the same way. You see the stick attacks the man, the knife attacks man, the stick and knife attack the man. And this time it's going to be pretty difficult because he's just going to try to isolate uh, only blocking with a knife. It's just an isolation exercise for awareness. And you might slip in the reverse grip blocking just to get an example of what that might feel like because there's a lot of his spotted dog, as you'll see, that's done with a reverse grip. So he comes in now, he's got to just block with the knife. He can block the stick, or if he's lucky, he can block my hand. And so we just do this set any way that he feels he needs to, to get this action in. And now here's the tricky part. He's doing it, getting out of the way, using the body elasticity and the footwork to get out of the way. Then this next is going to be using both to block. The attacker attacks in the same series, and this time the trainee is going to use both the, hand, the knife and the stick to block. Now this particular give and take set is this, the drum beat, you know, and that is going to be 12 stick and any angle knife, 3 o'clock stick and any angle knife, 6 o'clock stick and any angle knife, 9 o'clock and then any angle knife. And then you could switch 12 with the knife, any angle stick, 3 o'clock with the knife, any angle stick. 6 o'clock with the knife, any angle stick, and then 9 o'clock with the knife, and then any angle stick. So he's got to, you know, I attack twice, he, he blocks twice. Here's a 12 and a half beat, 3 and a half beat, 6 and a half beat, and then 9 and a half beat. Then we'll switch over to the knife side. There's 12 and a half beat, 3 and a half beat, 6 o'clock and a half beat, and 9 o'clock and a half beat. You're on a roll now. We have two strikes, but what about, you know, 12 anything, anything, 3 o'clock anything, anything, 6 o'clock anything, anything, and then come on in 9 o'clock anything, anything. Just keep on building this. These are the core. Now we have the famous Presas uh, sets of 3, 2, 1 to build on. And so basically speaking, the Espadiadaga version, as I learned in the Philippines from Ernesto Presas is a set of three. I am going to walk backwards and block one block, two blocks, three blocks. Then it is his turn to walk backwards and block as I step forward one strike, one strike, and one strike. Then I must come back block, block, and block. And then he 
has to block, block, and block against me. That's three steps. The two steps, a little bit more in and out, in and out ish. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Two step. Sets of one means there's no stepping. And a lot of times, like Remy presses, we consider this a, you know, a, a good, fun, close-up skill drill to do. I'm going to say out loud, uh, which you shouldn't do because it will confuse your partner, but uh, for the, your sake I say, me, him, me, him. But I, we're close up. I make any strike, so it's me and then him, me and him, me and him, me and him. Me and him. If it looks like you're getting too caught up in the same angles, take a moment and change the angle. Me, him. Me, him. Me, him. Me, him. It's a good idea to uh, do this because this version, it has many different names, and this style of training has uh, many different applications. And systems all over the world do a version of this. And that is that a trainer attacks, and the trainee blocks, and does a freestyle response, any way that you want. And so here he comes in. So just as an example, he gives me this attack. I block here, maybe he gives me that attack. And I block there. And then I can come in and do any kind of attack back which of course you have built from doing all the things that we just did prior. And so just a couple of examples of that. I attack, I attack, and, he, and I get away as he comes in and does it. I attack and attack, and I step back, and he gets to freestyle. You do the freestyle. I attack, I attack, and he gets to come back in. standby that I sort of put together called the Outside Invasion Series. We do an empty hand, we do it holding a pistol, we do it with a knife, we do it with a stick, and we also do it with a a stick and knife. And so if he gives it, we, we, whatever his attack is, we are essentially for, uh, wrist to wrist, you know. We wound up wrist to wrist. And so the first one gets through. And that means that I put this stick on his elbow. Now, if I'm, I might have this problem a little high, it's good to be somewhere around there. The first one gets through. Maybe I hit that weapon. Maybe I can hit that weapon. The, hip, the weapon bearing limb hits are aftermath considerations. So the first one gets through. Woo, woom, if you can. The second one is going to get stopped halfway. So if he's giving me a strike, he could be giving me a pummel strike, whatever it is, we're here. Now the second one gets stopped halfway, which is going to be painful for me. Damn, because he's used that knife. I'm going to take my elbow, put it here, clear here, hit, hit, and hit. Any order of hits that you want. But that first one is, is the throat cut, you know. Now I have a cut here on the side of my forearm. I've disarmed him technically and cut his throat. The third one, because this can't grab, because it's busy, it's holding a stick, is he's going to go past his center line. And so I, we have our contact, we hit here, he comes over, we pass, cut, cut, and hit. And that's just the three quick uh, outside invasion series that we use as a core, which I hope that you will uh, uh, add more to. Another Spotty Adaga drill I like to show, very classic, famous, for the essentials, and that is going to be the block pass and pin drill, or he go who bad, lu bad. He gives me this pummel strike, you know, that's coming down, and I block it with, I can block it with a knife, I can block it with a forearm, whatever. If I'm in reverse grip, I can do the same thing. So I block, I pass, and I pin, and then he blocks, he passes and pins, and you have this classic deal, of which I want you to do uh, inserts out of. You may do that as a takedown. Uh, you can do any 
uh, we always ask people to really be familiar with three to six really quick uh, inserts. You block, you pass, and you pin. He blocks, passes, and pins. And just pick, what I just did then was, I caught here, but you have this neck bridge and other things that little, we're going to show a little further in that involve stick takedowns. But you have all the half beat strikes. Use the block pass and pin drill as a foundation for picking up close quarter possibilities. Another essential I like to show, I think it's an essential hand stick and knife, is going to be this horizontal blast drill or it has numerous names and numerous systems, but it's kind of an essential one. It is that harpoon stab, that 12 o'clock thrusting stab that comes in, of which I knock over. This comes in, it's a knife, stick, knife. I give it to him, and it's knife, stick, knife. Now, of course, the good part of this is, the stick is supposed to whack the hand, or at least hurt the forearm as you're going along. And it's a very simple movement. I do ask you to get familiar with three, hopefully six different uh, types of inserts that you can do that will uh, challenge you and keep you Another well. classic one, these are things I learned in the Philippines, but also in the U.S. Uh, the, a combination of all these Filipino systems I've done since about 1986. And one of them I learned in the Philippines, though, was the windmill drill. And it can work is spot in Naga too. Um, it comes in, and I'm using, you know, the handle. If I had a reverse grip, which is perfect for the windmill, because it's a pummel strike drill, and it's really a reverse grip drill, but you can do it with a saber grip too. And that is the big one. Here's the smaller circle to the throat that we're trying to, you know, hit or cut the throat. And then we can switch over to the chainsaw, for three fundamental circular drills, and then I'll come back, and what I'd like to see you do is have at least three to six or nine different inserts uh, off of this windmill. So, principle to so many of Spadidago practices is uh, the realization that you could do a tremendous amount of double stick patterns with Espadia Daga. And once you do that, man, your list of potential workouts just skyrockets, you know. You don't have to have just isolated things that you were taught with just this and this. And a, and a, and a classic one, of course, is uh, this cob-cob drill. It's universal, there are many variations to it. A hit and retract, a slash through, many different variations. But here is this, they call heaven, standard earth. I've heard it called many, many different things, you know. Uh, 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 heaven, earth, hell, many different names. But here is a hit and retract that's high, and a hit and retract that's high. The middle line, it is almost impossible to hit sticks with horizontal sticks. So you give it a slight bend and a slight bend, and the low one is that reverse. You've even seen people go knee high to do this part here. But you have high and back, high and back, mid and back, mid and back, low and back, low and back, back to the high. Here, let's just take a look at the uh, slash through. Slash through, slash through, slash through, slash through, slash through, slash through, high, high. And you see, uh, try to uh, develop the cob cob. It is a, a lot of body elasticity and doing the chubby checker twist that uh, many Filipino systems use cob cob in the very, very beginning to get people acclimated to this. Another uh, movement that helps you with taking these double stick drills and taking them over to a spotty dog is what many refer to as the side switchers in English. And so if you're right side open, left side closed, you have a one beat side switch, right? I'm here and you switch to here. Now you're on this side. And then you switch to here. And these are just the side switchers. You'd like to hear whoosh, whoosh, whoosh when you're doing it. Certainly with a stick, not with a knife. But you can see how you can go from the 3 o'clock to the 9 o'clock position. And if you want to consider it a 2 beat drill, 1, 2, or you can just 1 and 1. And the other one is a 3 stepper side switcher that slash through, slash through, you hit it and retract it. And now I'm on this side, slash through, slash through, hit it and retract it. 
Hey, I want you to try all these things with reverse grip. Slash through, slash through, hit and retract. Slash it through, slash it through, hit and retract. One thing you can usually do is express these double stick patterns that people love to do and do them with, with the spotty daga. And one of the basic fundamental ones is the diamond pattern. And remember, that's basically head, knee, head, knee. Split the head, split the knee, hit the head, you know, cut the knee in terms of the spotty daga. So that's what this looks like here is this pattern. This is with a saber grip, high, low, high, low. Make sure you get a contact on that low end. All the grandmasters are looking for the sound and, and uh, listening for the sound. And you know, they want that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and not, you know, one, two, three, four. But one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now that's the saber grip version. Boom, 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 boom. There's a classic reverse grip version uh, that is basically the same thing. You can you stab and stab. Stick, stick, stab, stab. But in order to do it with a partner, and I learned this years ago, was to hit forearms. So we're high, high, forearm, forearm. High, high, forearm, forearm. High, high, forearm, and forearm. And then I learned another part of this, which I think was in the Philippines, was we hit high, hit low. As the, this goes, don't do this um, together right away, but I crunch down here and try to get a wrist cut, and this comes here and I try to get a wrist cut. Sooner or later, both guys can do it to each other, but it can, might be confusing at the very beginning. So you have high, low, forearm, if you do hit forearm to forearm, crank it down, cut the wrist, you're here, you're forearm to forearm, crank it down, and then you cut the wrist. Your knife must be sharp from here to here, which so many Filipino blades are, you know. So you have high, low, high cut, low cut. And that's a classic one. And then, of course, you have all these different, we'll go back to saber grip, uh, all these different versions where you come in and catch the arm, all the grappling that we're going to try to discuss here in a second. But try to have three to six or more inserts off the diamond pattern. Now, here's another version that is going to be We'll do it at his high, low, high, high, low, high. One, two, three. One, another version that is kind of interesting. Here is event one, event two, event three, event four. I'm going to break this on three. Here's one, two, and a stab, which he knocks over. He's got to save his head. The only thing he can do is use the stick. So that's one, two, three. One, two, three. We'll move it right toward the center here. And now the other side is one, two, three, four. I, he sees the harpoon. The stick saves him. He's got to save himself. And so the, the knife comes out. This is a, a variation of the diamond pattern. You know the, the X. There's so many X's in the double sticks. You can do. You can be right side open, left side open, and down and down and down and down. And you can cut an X here. And you can cut an X here. And cut an X here. And cut an X here. You know. You can do these four corners. But uh, this is just a classic. And many in the Philippines, many systems refer to it as just sinawali. And it's a four count. And that is down, 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 and down. Then I come over here to right side, open, left side, close. We're going to go 3 o'clock, half an X, the rest of the X. Then we're down here at 6 o'clock, right side open, left side open, up, 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 and up. Come over to here for the 9 o'clock side, across, across. There's half an X, back and back. And we have this in detail in other videos. I'm just trying to do a bunch of stuff right now. So it kind of goes a little bit like this. Here's our high at 12. We're down, 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 down. We regroup over to here. Across, 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 across. We're down here. Up, 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 and up. And then we're over here. Across, 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 across. And that would be, you know, the, the big way to do a spotty adaga uh, covering all corners of the X. Now what someone referred to as Sinawali in America, uh, in a many systems in the Philippines refer the, the six counts as double, double Sinawali. Uh, so here we are as body dog. Remember we did the side switcher. One, two, three, and back. Pause. 
because that's all we were doing. One, two, three, and back, pause. But if you put the both of them together, you've got this classic, some people refer to as heaven six. And then you have a version that hits low. And we can't do them all. It's impossible to try to cover them all. But I just want to show you this heaven six version. And so here I am. We have high, high, high and back, high, high, high and back. This body of dog doing the heaven six. And then if you want to, we'll do that low one. High, low, high, high, low, and high. As when I teach double sticks, I have defeat the pattern as a title. And so you're not you're not trying to learn these these uh, double stick patterns or these espadiadago patterns to dance with the person and be happy and then you're done. The name of the game is to defeat the pattern. That's the next step which most people usually don't do. And so uh, I learned this in the Philippines and Ernesto Preses was pretty high on it as the end product of what you were doing back then uh, in the 1990s. And so if someone walks toward you, let's just say doing the diamond pattern. They walk toward you doing the diamond pattern. You observe this and to defeat the diamond pattern, you don't match the diamond pattern. You do another pattern or you do the, the diamond pattern off beat. So it's not row, row, row your boat that we're all singing. We're all starting at a different time. And so the name of the game is to defeat it. And so if he's coming in at this angle from here, doing that diamond pattern, I'm watching what he's doing. And then my job is to hit that. That one comes in, hit that, and then finish him off. <clears throat> Every time you do one of these patterns, end with defeat the pattern. Impact disarms, and then impact takedowns or other types of grappling takedowns, which are coming up next. So, okay. I'm not a really big fan of sombrata. This would be a spadiadaga sombrata. And I'm really not a big fan of it, but if you're going to put a Filipino stylist out into the world, you pretty much have to make sure they know this classic particular drill. This is a spadiadaga sombrata, shadow boxing, another form of it. All right, so first strike is overhead. I'm just doing that open sombrata block, now pushing the stick off to one side, and I return on a quick line right here. Then he drops. I do a, kind of a drop block here. Rear back and uh, insert. Then he flips over. I do a harada, the roof block. And then I'm over the top. Now we're switching sides. He comes this way. Drop blocks. He inserts. And I move. Go ahead, right here. Okay. Move out of the way. Abanico. cover some takedowns with this body of Daga. Remember, the, uh, one of the major problems is uh, this hand, or this hand, but this hand too is busy, so we can't do any grappling grabs with this. We have to maybe use the handle here. Uh, we have to use many of the knives you will find have a big enough pummel that has uh, inclination toward hooking. Or you'll see a reverse grip is also very handy for grappling. So you have to decide. Um, you know what the grip is going to be. Here is just some examples. and We don't have a lot of time on this film. I just want to inspire you with everything here and you move on to a deeper look at it. And so here, for example, is an impact disarm. The number one takedown is an impact, you know, takedown. And with, the, with the diamond pattern, you destroy his head, you shatter his kneecap. Big stuff. So that's an impact disarm. If he comes in, and I'm able to maybe get that disarm whack there. Here's the rear pull. And uh, look at me, I'm using the handle. And I'm just going to pull him down this way. If you're fortunate enough to have a reverse grip, I can just pull him down as a rear takedown. Getting behind him, putting the stick across his neck, and pulling him down. <clears throat> Another classic one 
is going to be this neck bridge. He comes in, I hit here, and there's that neck bridge. Look at the configuration. If you're in a reverse grip, it would look like this. You may have to whack the leg for support, but this is a classic neck bridge with double weapons. And by the way, too, you know, you could be the Espadiadaga guy. He might just be a stick guy or a knife guy uh, coming in. Another super classic, we'll get back so you can kind of see the legs here. He's coming in, you whack that, you whack that, he's got a disarm here. It's just this classic leg sweep with the stick. If, you, if the stick is out here, it's too far. If it's here, it has power. So you have a shaft push, a pummel push, and I've even seen the tip push, which is easily knocked off. But none, nonetheless, it might work. On the other side, over here, you have the knife push of the saber, or you have the edge push to take them down, or less than lethal, you have the pummel. And of course, with the reverse grip, that's a, a clavicle attack, that par none, you know. And so you have, but of course, the, the fundamental thing is that leg sweep that takes the person down while these hands are busy up here. So what I've done two through time is isolate the uh, single hand grip takedowns and try to put them into double stick takedowns but also reverse grip takedowns and saber grip takedowns with a knife. And so uh, here is a classic one. Well, he has stepped forward, you know, with this leg here so he can see from the camera. I've done all kinds of business up here. And this inserts. Now, this doesn't insert so he bounces straight up. This inserts so he goes like that. That shoots in. This goes on the thigh. There's a foot step and a push. And it's called the thigh push. And that's an example of uh, one of the uh, takedowns that you can use. Here's another one, a classic. Boom, 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 right? Uh, this, the underarm takedown, called by many, you know. This runs parallel to the forearm and goes down. If it's got a reverse grip, it's really good. Or you can hook here. And this is a, a, a nice way to uh, do an Espadiadaga takedown, uh, a branch up style takedown. have all the classic double stick workouts to put through a uh, stick and knife, but the, there's many, many of these patterns that you could pursue. And uh, Ernesto Preces had as many as 16 in the 1990s that we had to memorize and learn. And you don't have to do all 16 of them, but I want to show you, Jason's going to come out and show several of them so that you have stuff to work on. But I'd like to spend a quick moment to show you how you can apply them with a partner and so forth. Remember that these patterns uh, are, are really were based on the single stick attack, the wittick, the, the fan. They would insert the single stick into the Espadiadaga movements. And so this one looks a little bit like this. You're standing. How would Muhammad Ali stand, you know, if he had a stick and a knife? A slash through and stab. Hit low. This, if this is the bolo or the machete, that's supposed to cut the face of the knife as this comes to a forward stab. And now the name of it is namesake comes in and hit and retract. When we had to do them in the Negro Silent, they made us have lots of dynamic body motion and to, to make that elasticity in the body. Uh, and here it is once again, slash, stab, hit. For one, and here's just a quick example of how you might do it with a partner. There's not going to be, you'll see, you don't stab each other. But here we slash through, stab, hit. This tip hit is symbolic of the nose or face cut. And then we stab and come back. And so that's how you can take these drills and work them with a partner. We don't have time. But many of these have a mono-mono empty hand application also. But that's not the subject of today. Here's a list of some responses that Hawk was talking about. Uh, we call them by the name of the response strike. Uh, Wittik, Lobtik, Banda Banda, Ocho Ocho, which has a downward and upward. And so on. Here's just a, a few uh, that I will demonstrate for you right now. So first, Wittik.
Next one, lob tick. We just continue that strike all the way through. Once again. Now, banda y banda, that's a downward and an upward strike. First we did a strike, then a follow through, and down and back. So let's take a group those three. Next we'll incorporate the Ojo which is figure eight. We come up, down with figure eight. I'll do it this way. Two, four, downward, figure eight. Now we'll do upward figure eight. When you set this one up, you have to come to a low position down here so that you can follow through upwards. One, two, three, four, right there. One, two, three, four, upward, figure eight. Okay. Now we have the abanico, the fan strike. You step in, strike. Step in, strike. One, two, three, Four, step in, strike. That's where it ends, right there. One, two, three, stab. Fan strike, and you're back in. One, two, three. Now we do, that was horizontal, then we do vertical. Face the camera. One, two, three. Okay, so Giti, stab. First we stab with the tip of the stick. It's going to be a one, two, three. One, two, three, four. Down, one. Okay. Now, stab with the other side, or puño. One, two, three, four. Puño, puño. That's just puño, puño. One, two, three, four. Puño, puño. Next, doblete. Your small circle. So you should be practicing your small circles. Dobletes. trying to do this in a bit of a quick progression but at some point when you've done all of these side switchers and some of these motions we need to shadow box and so that is just simply you moving around and working imagining an enemy in front of you and getting some of this activity in that uh, is a good shadow boxing exercise that you might do even recall with
Another way to develop skill with shadow boxing is not have an imaginary enemy, which may not be as good in real life as you might wind up, but you need to react and see humans doing these actions against you. I have two sticks here, and what you can do in your classes for safety if they don't have gear and so forth, and as a precursor in the progression of stick or his body dog training, he can't go past that stick, he can't go past this stick. And so they are going to shadow box each other from a safe distance and have no contact, but they get to see real actions coming at them. And as you've been seeing, the end result is a bit of uh, uh, freestyle Espadi Daga sparring. You should mix that up, Espadi Daga versus stick, Espadi Daga sparring versus knife, etc. But that's what it all is about. Uh, you know, you can start from the fight and work backwards. That's my approach. And so that's why I don't have a lot of these intricate, complicated moves where people's arms are hooked up in this little cue ball stab or something. I just don't think it's going to happen enough to worry about. So we have the kill shot, uh, which is what we call it, and uh, as we actually have kill shot tournaments every now and then. Uh, wooden stick, metal knife, gear, and uh, we have to, you have to research the kill shot rules later. I hope this gives you a lot of simple yet important things to do and work on, and it offers an inspiration to go deep and deep into any one single of these aspects that you might find interesting.